Hi, my name is Stefan Wolf. I'm Systems Engineer for Network and Security at VMware. And today is with me. Hi, I'm Lucien Patron. I'm a senior consultant here in uh, ITQ. And today we are here to talk about uh, VCDR. So, Luciano, what is VCDR? Well, VCDR is a uh, um, DR as a service from VMware. So this is a service that they were uh, created for your DR uh, disaster recovery uh, plans. So this is a cloud, uh, VMA cloud uh, DR. So that's it. So um, let's start here a small example. So we have here uh, vCenter <coughs> and then we have here your uh, DR as a service. So DR as a service will be your SIS, that's a orchestrator, and here you have your scale out file system. This is an object storage that will store everything uh, that we will replicate from here. So to connect here to the, to, to connect your, uh, uh, I will put here saying that this is a site one. To uh, connect your site, uh, site one to your, uh, to the orchestrator, uh, you need to install here an uh, OVF. And this OVF is called, uh, let's put here, orchestrator connector. So the connector, now with the, when you install the connector, everything is, is uh, uh, connected between both. The VMR, VMR Cloud DR is now connected to your site one. So, and you start uh, doing your uh, configuration on what the, we have here in the uh, SIS orchestrator. So. Here we can build DR plans, um, test, tests, fail over, uh, the amount of restore points that you want, etc. health checks, checks. So, Basically, this is the DR management. So everything that you need to do is done on, a, on a, the or, orchestrator. And uh, when you replicate all the VMs from your site one, in this case, site one to your uh, SI orchestrator, you'll be stored here. And uh, I forgot to mention that this is AWS. So this is an AWS scale out file system. Everything is stored as an object storage here. Okay, and what kind of replication is used to bring the VMs from the on-premise side to this object? Well, they the use it as a, just a normal VM snapshot. That's it. What it's doing is copy the, the snapshot of a VM into the, the, the scale-out file system as an object storage. That's it. So that's a simple uh, copy. Okay, now we have the VMs on the object storage. What happens now if really a disaster recovery uh, or disaster scenario happens? So let us imagine the source data center is, is down. So how we spin up all these VMs? So uh, after you have your uh, disaster, then you need to launch a failover. So and again, failover uh, as a DR plan can be uh, a real uh, disaster or can be just a, a, a test. So we can go now to a different, this is VMC on AWS and it will build an SDDC uh, instance. So uh, this is called failover. After we launch the, the, the failover, the, the orchestrator will automatically 
do a live mount mm -hmm. and on all the VMs that you are now protecting will be um, power up here and everything will be ready. But it takes some time because we need to build a, a SDDC uh, instance. Um, uh, all the VM, copy all the VMs, etc. because this is on demand. Meaning you are on demand saying that it's, this is only will exist as long as you uh, send uh, a failover, uh, launch a failover or a dis uh, launch a, a, dis a disaster recovery. Because to save money to the customers, this will not exist on uh, AWS, on, on demand. But there is another one called Life Light. Uh, sorry, Light Pilot. So light, uh, life, Lifestyle Light Pilot is the same, but it has a small SDDC instance running all the time. This is why it's life, life. So let's say you have here uh, some VMs that are critical. So you cannot wait uh, after you have a disaster here, you cannot wait hours that your, the, the, your DR is, is built. So these VMs need to be, applications need to be right away available. So this has a small three O's inside of this SDDC. We can add, after you launch your, your disaster recovery, you can add more uh, um, ESXi O's inside of your SDDC, but at least these three uh, as a minimum, and all the VMs that are critical can now be copied directly uh, to here, and they will be ready as long as the time just to copy um, the VM to this side. So this is one, one option. If not, on-demand will be only built when you launch uh, 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 DR uh, mm -hmm. failover. DR failover, but this will only be uh, built in two situations, when you, you have a disaster or you do a test. If you want to do a test plan, uh, let's say you want to test your DR if it's working, then you do again, uh, launch again a, a, a failover, you will build this uh, um, SDDC, test everything is okay, this is just a test for your DR if you need one day. So after that, that's it. You don't need it anymore. So, so the on-demand option is for non-critical workloads yep. that you can, it not exists until really a disaster yep. scenario yep. has happened. So I save costs because I consume nothing here at this, mm -hmm. no SDDC is there. Mm -hmm. And if I have really critical workloads that I have to have immediately working, I have, let us say, the standby, let us say, live, live, live light pilot option as a standby SDDC that runs all the time to waiting to take over if there is a yep. disaster Correct. scenario happens. Okay, so but now what, what happens if I have a ransomware attack in my mm -hmm. on-premise data center, machines are infected and maybe also these machines are, are let us say, replicated and snapshot over, mm -hmm. what happens with my data? Yeah, yeah, correct. So uh, that's a good question because, let's, uh, like I said, here you, you can create uh, restore points. So restore points you have, let's say, your first one, you have the second one, you have the third one, you have a fourth, whatever. And this one is the last one. So this last one is already infected by the, the, the encrypted by the, the ransomware attack. But all the three or the, the, the other below, they are not affected. Why? Because this is immutable backups. What that means, means that these files cannot be changed, never. So we can copy uh, uh, a snapshot if you want, but you cannot change it. So you can save for a, a week, a year, or whatever you are, you have your <laughs> in your backup plan, uh, but never will be uh, changed. Uh, so you are mm -hmm. safe for this, so any encryption on the other, on the other rest of the stop points. Okay, so we have, for example, a good first backup is good, the second backup is good, third backup is good. Now the last backup that I made was including the ransomware, so I kill the one and use the one before, yep, correct. and I have a clean backup that works pretty well. Yeah. Okay, what is the recovery point objective in this well, case? Well, uh, you can have 48 uh, uh, snapshots per day. Mm -hmm. So that means you can have one each 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So your RPO in this case is 30 minutes. 
but your RTO is four hours. So mm -hmm. that means that's the time you have your uh, uh, infrastructure or your DR ready to be to be accessible and your VMs mm -hmm. to be uh, power on. This is four hours plus the time that it consumes to create all the SDDC and the time that consumes to copy all the VMs when you use it on demand. If you use the light pilot, then, then it's just the four hours and then just the time that he has to copy the, the VMs from one side to another. Then this is inside of the AWS, so this is really quick. So that will be. Okay, great. Um, so let us imagine, so we, have to, we had a, we had a um, disaster recovery scenario or disaster scenario. We moved over, all working's fine now, all running here now. What happens if we say, okay, we fixed the problem on the source side, ransomware is, is gone, mm -hmm. uh, it's working fine again, and now I want this active side now be take over, fail back to the original yeah. side. So after you fix your problems on your site, all your infrastructure is ready to, to be uh, used again. So then you do, you launch from, again, from the orchestrator, you launch uh, Failback. So this is, you will send all the day delta back to your infrastructure and all the VMs will be uh, uh, set and then you can power up and they will be here. So you can send all, but let's say you are saying that, okay, customer has uh, uh, already the site infrastructure ready to be, to be used. But let's say after the problem, they just, a decision, so we don't have any more on-prem infrastructure. So you won't use VMC on AWS. So if that is the case, then that's that's okay. Customer can still use this forever. So this mm -hmm. after they have the failover here, they can uh, uh, still use this until they will, they have forever, or mm -hmm. one day decided to send back to the one on-prem infrastructure. So so like they use usually in a in a VMC and AWS, yes, the normal, normal use yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, just a final uh, uh, talk here. So, we have site one, but if you want, you can have how many sites you want. You have, you can have site two, site three, whatever. As long as you have your uh, uh, orchestrator connector installed on your on your uh, site, this in this this case in your in your vCenter can be connected to the uh, orchestrator, files can be copied, and then you can protect more than one site and more than one infrastructure. So that is VDR, uh, disaster recovery as a service, so. Okay, thank you. Um, one last final question. Uh, you mentioned here this is based on AWS, VMC on AWS, STDC. Is there also other partners that we have to do this kind of service? At, at the moment, VMware only uh, supports AWS. So they are working to have also an Azure, Google, and other uh, public clouds, but at the moment it's only VMC on AWS. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So thank you for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe on our video as on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much.